think it shouldn't be understated as well, the, the sort of passion and care that's been put into these missions. Mm. And then we have a quote from White Dwarf 503 on boarding actions. Relentlessly playtested to ensure that flavour was really felt on the table while maintaining balance for both sides. So let's talk about boarding actions being relentlessly playtested. Boarding actions is a good way for new players to play 500 points worth of 40k. You don't need 2000 points, you don't even need 1000 points. 500 points of infantry is fine. They used to be boarding patrol boxes. They are very similar to the combat patrol boxes, especially when you look at the Battle Sisters versions. The rules are very similar to Warhammer 40,000's main rules, but there's just a few minor differences. You can't charge someone out of line of sight. Overwatch is not a stratagem, it's an action you do in your turn to fire Overwatch in your opponent's turn. There are no leaders attached to units, it takes more of a 9th edition stance, and then you can use a stratagem to give their ability, for example, lethal hits, to a nearby unit for that turn. If you really wanted to get a small number of Voidsmen, this is perfect for the theme, and then you can ally them into your other Imperium armies. The basic rules to adapt 40k to boarding patrol were given away for free at the start of the edition on the Warhammer community website. The biggest expense is the board. That's where you have a lot of terrain that's got a lot of detail, that's also mirrors of itself, so you can tell that this was done as quickly as possible on a computer, and it's kind of a paint to paint. So what you use is something like not Jenga TM. And using these wooden blocks, I can make a map exactly like the ones used in the boarding patrol missions. That's what I suggest doing, not buying the whole boarding patrol box. The rules we got at the start of the edition were very simple. They were very much a get you by. The issue we had is that there were no detachments. That meant that you were lacking a lot of flavor. And that is the main thing that this book gives you back. But it is relentlessly playtested and well made. I kept hearing that in White Dwarf, in a Warhammer community article advertising the book, and across the influencers given advanced copies. I am not one of them. But Games Workshop do protest too much. If you ever find out a dog is called Vicious, that dog is a coward. If you hear the horse is called Rapido, it's always going to come last. This relentlessly playtested book has taken a year to come out, and the rules are really the same as the start of the edition which you got as a free PDF. I would even think that this book was meant to be released last year, and it had been delayed to then be released now, so that it could coincide with one year after the initial release and they could still keep some momentum on sales. No one seems to have told them about Death Watch, so they are in the wrong, some would say right, place. They are in the Adeptus Astartes section. So using these Death Watch units, you won't get Oath of Moment because it's not on their data card anymore. Units with Oath of Moment didn't retain it. So the Death Watch units don't have that anymore. They are not Adeptus Astartes keyword, so they won't get the bonus detachment rule. And detachments are really the only thing to buy this book for. To make this work with Death Watch, you have to use their index version when this unit was called the Death Watch Veterans, which is what they're named as in the book, the Boarding Patrol book. So you've got to use the index version, and then your veterans won't have shotguns or snipers. They will have long vigil range weapons, which can be a very annoying thing for most people. When you're playing boarding actions, you are restricted to some specific units. You can't just use the Agents of the Imperium ability to ally in more units. Death Watch can't be in the Agents detachments or anywhere else. And because of the limited units, if you wanted a Retribute Assister Squad with heavy flamers burning their way down a corridor while Crusaders with shields are holding up the doors, you can't. Neither of those are available as they're not listed on the boarding actions roster. And if you go a bit deeper, you see there's more issues with more of the characters and units. Kane's arrow for the Eldari has Maugen Ra listed, and it even specifies that you can only take that Phoenix Lord if you can include one of the units that it can normally be attached to. Maugen Ra can only be with Dark Reapers. Dark Reapers are not an option in the Kane's arrow detachment. So he's listed there, but you can't take him. 
Let's not get into me listing errors again. I seem to do it for everything that Games Workshop's releasing recently. Just trust me that there are a few. The missions, the passion and care that's been put into the missions must have happened some time ago because most of these missions are barely tweaked copies of last edition missions. It doesn't take too much thought to readapt them. Any care or thought that went into making these good already happened a year ago. The really cool missions, the ones I liked, happened to be in the White Dwarf magazine. That's where you got things like conveyor belts that move your troops around, monster mutant tiles because there's some horrible monstrosity beneath the deck. There were warp portals as card things. These were really cool missions. This book doesn't have them or any card cutouts. But if they were in a magazine, you could have put them in the book. You could have included the time missions that didn't need any cards, but they came out in April 2024, which is almost certainly after this book was written. We can guess when this book was written because of all that from before. Like there are no Hernkin Jaegers who were a more recent Kill Team release and then given 40k rules. And we are also seeing exactly the same detachment issues for the factions that you know I talk about, one, two, three, while I love them, their problems in boarding actions are much the same as the problems they have in 40k right now. Like the codexes did, to stop the early edition game power of the Genesteedle cult, they have been split apart. Aberrants and neophytes can't be in the same Genesteedle cult army. The patriarch is separate even to them and the other monsters, unlike the Biosanctic Brood Surge. Maybe they were really well playtested, but that version of 40k is not what needs to be adapted to now. We are living in 10th edition, where rules updates happen both too fast and too slowly. This book was written at the start of 10th edition to be compatible with those first rules, and we see the same things as well. Tone down the Eldar, break up the Gene Stealer cult, upgrade the Battle Sisters. It is not well written for 40k. It has the same flaws we've come to expect of 10th edition. Rules not matching other rules changes, some rules not being updated often enough to keep up. And you're not gonna get competitive balance because its units points are the same as the ones in 40K. It's the same points document. And they're not tied to the strength of the unit in boarding actions. Infernus Marines are 80 points on the open fields of 40k and 80 points in the enclosed spaces of boarding actions where you need to step into Overwatch line of sight to charge them. Apothecaries lose all their special rules to return models to units, but they are the same points. It's not even a, oh yeah, you can use a command point to use the ability. No, no, expressly, they lose all of their abilities. They're just a dude with two pistols. And boarding actions and their rules are not intended to use the rules commentary or other updates to 40k rules. So it's not going to keep up with balance or even its own version of balance. Now boarding actions are fun to play, just like 40k is fun. But let's not pretend it's going to maintain any kind of balance. Now we get to the bit where I decide I'm just gonna stop worrying and love playing the game as best we can. I do recommend it as a game mode to get into 40k or to try something new with smaller sized armies. And now, unlike at the start of the edition, there are detachment rules. You can use the rules as they are, or you can adapt them. And with them, maybe you can have a great day of 40k.